Greetings and welcome to Parsing John. Today we're going to be taking a look at chapter 1, verse 15, right here. Here we've got our rubric. So everybody, quick read over that if you've forgotten any of it. Put this down in the corner. Barely visible. All right, let's read it aloud. Ioannis testimonium perhibit de ipso et clamat dicens hic erat quem dixi qui post me venturus est ante me factus est quia prior me erat. So far the text. All right, I want to find our verb first. That's not a verb. That's not a verb. And here we go. Prohibit, and that's going to be et. It's this comes from prohibeo, perhibeo, not prohibeo. Almost made that mistake last time we ran into this word. Um, Perhibeo is a second conjugation, so that's going to make it third person singular present tense. And it is naturally active and indicative. And this means to hold or cite. Holds. Cites. As in citing a source. All right, and this thing takes a direct object. We'll get to that after we find our subject. We know what it is. A singular subject. So you look at the very beginning, we've got Ioannis, which initially looks like a third or fifth declension. Well, third declension, plural, or fifth declension. Uh, there are no names that I've ever been made aware of that are fifth declension. And this technically comes from Greek, which in turn got it from Hebrew or Aramaic. So this is not a naturalized Latin word. And normally what Latin does when it's taking a name from Greek, even if the Greek in turn took that name from a different language, uh, Latin is going to convert it into the closest equivalent declension. For most of these, it's going to be putting it into the first declension, even if the name uh, is in reference to a masculine character. Uh, Aeneas and Chises, uh, those are two big names that are technically Greek, but have been taken into the Aeneid and have been made into first declension masculine irregulars. So we do have a long E here, but it is actually nominative, singular, and masculine. Um, this one, since it ends in ES, is it could be a third, or it could be a first. Um, Aeneas is... When it appears in Latin, it appears A-S. And so that one is very weird. But and Chises, I think that one would be the same pattern that uh, John here would follow. Instantly, it means John. Anyway, enough of that. So John holds, what does he hold? Why a testimonium. Um here is an accusative, singular, neuter word. So technically it could be a second runner for our subject, except that this one is clearly only can clearly only can be our subject and this is of course witness as we have seen it before all right now we've got a prepositional phrase de ipso de takes the ablative ipso is clearly ablative singular masculine and it means himself all right and uh been paying attention to the Greek video, you'll spot a problem immediately right there. But that's for the comparison video ways down the road. But maybe underline this one, star it, put a confused face over it so you don't forget it. A very weird looking confused face. All right, so he holds witness about himself et and Klamat, klamat is a first conjugation, so that's third person, singular, present, active, and indicative. And shouts. Dickens! We've got an ENS ending here, which is either a standard adjective ending or a verbal adjective ending. It's normally actually going to be a verbal adjective, it's just the way it's translated often doesn't give us the same idea as a what we call participle. So this is going to be nominative, singular, and masculine because John is masculine. We know that for certain. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to tell the gender from this present tense participle. And it's, of course, active part. All right. So we have a quote here, which means we want quotation marks. 
All right. This would be nominative, singular, masculine, hick, hick, hawk. Write that down here. Hawk, so we got that one right there. This, and we're going to insert the word one. If you recall, we can do that to make it clearer in English when we don't have a, a actual noun for the demonstrative to point to. This one, third person, singular, imperfect, active, indicative of sum, was, quem. This is, comes from qui qui quod. Sorry, rubric, you're in the way now. Qui, the long mark, macron, quai, and quod. This one was who. So we've got a person we're talking about. We don't want to use which or what, we just we want to use who. And then dixi comes from dico, dicere, dixi. So it's first person, singular, perfect, third principal part, active, and indicative. Who I spoke of. I'm going to include the word of there because that's a part of the idea of this verb. And actually... I think most Latin verbs of speaking have have that as a clear option for how we can translate it. All right, qui, running out of room here, nominative, singular, masculine, or technically it could be nominative plural masculine, because qui, qua, quod, qui, 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 I think I'm saying, I said all those, right? So the nominative singular, nominative plural, they both look the exact same, but it's going to be singular. We know because est here, which is a third person, singular, present, active, and indicative. But, well, that may be true. We have something curious going on before it. Venturus. Got a wrong U there. Ventur is technically the stem of the future participle or the future infinitive of most verbs. This comes from Weneo, so that's the stem of the fourth principal part, and the future participle slash future infinitive is built off of that. Now, I think we may have run into something like this beforehand. Uh, I may have just skipped over it really quickly last time. And I, I think there is a, a specific name for what we have going on here, but I'm sorry, cannot remember it. Can't remember even where to look for it. Suffice it to say, we're going to treat this... Uh, like what it is on its own with this. So this is, is, and this is, as I said, us, nominative, singular, masculine, future, active, part, or uh, future, active, infinitive is the other option for this one. And so we would translate this either as um, who is being about to be, or who is to be about to be. Very awkward in English, I know. All right, so I'm going to write both of those in there. Being about to be slash to be about to be. All right, so far so good with this weird way of saying things. Post may... Post is a preposition, and it takes the accusative in its case. We know may is long there, and it's going to be singular. And since it's in reference to John, it's going to be masculine. But since it's a pronoun, we don't really need to write that in. It means after. Do not need to capitalize that. Okay. All right, moving on. Factus est. Est here is going to be a repetition of this one, except that die. We've got factus which makes this act a perfect verb, not the same as that. This is a paraphrastic phrase, and this is another sort of paraphrastic phrase. So much writing around there. All right, so us we know is going to be nominative, and is third person, singular, perfect, passive, indicative. And I forget how we keep translating this one, but was made or became. All right. Ante me. 
next prepositional phrase. One more. Ante takes the accusative. This is singular. Again, we don't need to write down gender because we know this may is that may, and this may is naturally Ioannis, who is our speaker. All right, and this means before me. All right, so then this clause is <laughs> so far who is, oh, coming, left that out. Who is uh, being about to be coming after me was, uh, became before me. Okay, that's really, really weird. Uh, so in your own translation, you want to pick between these two. It's not going to be an easy choice because it just sounds really weird no matter how you say it. Um, one thing that we can do is just choose about and to come and slim it down to that tiny little thing. So we would have who is about to come after me became before me. All right, because moving out of that den of terror, before, uh, be, no. clearly you can tell my mind is not on target. Because erat, third person, singular, imperfect, active, indicative, was prior. Got I-O-R here as our ending. And this is, lo and behold, an excuse to finally use something we haven't, I don't think, before now. Uh, we haven't used before now in our identifying of it. So what we've got here, prior, is an adjective. So if you recall, nouns and adjectives, they have case, number, and gender. And on rare occasions, where necessary, in a, for adjectives, we include the degree. And today, prior finally lets us get to use the comparative form of the degree. So this is nominative, singular, masculine, comparative. Bam! Finally get to use that. Okay, so this means just before. Why we couldn't have ante? Nah, I'm not sure. All right, well, we'll probably figure that out once we take a look at the, once we get to compare this with its Greek version. Anyway, because he was before, and then we've got may here. Prior is not a preposition, so it doesn't take a object. It's also not a verb, so it doesn't take an object. So we've got just this may out there, and we need may to do something. Well, since we have a comparative, we have this one thing that may can be. If you recall, the forms of may are ego, may, like visible, yes, mihi, may, there's our accusative form, may, and there's our ablative form. The accusative and the ablative look exactly the same. Got an accusative there, accusative there. So what we must have here is actually an ablative singular. This being a ablative of comparison. It's cool that we get to use that too. All right, so there is all of our text. We can go ahead and read all of it aloud, including this part right here. I'm going to slim that down and wouldn't actually read it though. All right, John holds a witness about himself and shouts. saying, this one was who I spoke of, who is about to come after me, what he became before me, because he was before me. So there is our translation of the Latin text. I hope taking a look at it with me has been insightful. Um, if I am able to find or remember what this construction is here, I will let you know in our next video. And in the meantime, try not to die of boredom. Get a lot of work done. Enjoy the upcoming holiday season and have a good day.